Hello everybody, my name is Sarah, Pearls of Wisdom and Food on YouTube and Facebook. How are you today? Yes, I do have my coffee and I will work on not slurping because I understand that yes, it is not, it is not a in public society uh, approved sort of thing. So anyway, try this on for size. Think of this. Do the visual. Having a little sugar or a little bit of a grain, a bread, a cracker, a cookie, is like keeping the pilot light on in your addiction, in your brain. Okay? It's like keeping that little flame going. If you don't have sugar and you don't have grains, there's no pilot light. It can't, it can't fire up unless you bring in some of those two items in foods. And, um, and I, I think it's a very interesting concept. I watch it at play all the time at work. I went to um, an agency meeting required by the state for my position yesterday on another addiction and they brought up the topic of the pilot light and I absolutely loved it. And so if you think that you've got maybe one or two pilot lights, one for sugar and one for grains, and it is always going to be lit, it's the eternal flame as long as you keep having those items. And once you have them, they are immediately turned from the pilot light position to a low flame or maybe even a high flame. And when that happens, guess what? You want more because the only thing, the only thing that fuels the pilot light is more sugar and more grains. So tapering off another, another symbolic thing for the pilot light is, um, really not going to work. Having it in safety might not work if you're an addict like I am. My brain lights up like cocaine with grains and sugar. I can't go near it. Could I have those things in a past decade or two or three or four or five, six? Of course, I did. For 60 years I had sugars and grains. And um, guess what? Metabolism slow down. Weight doesn't come off as easy. Weight comes on a whole lot easier. It gets tough. And so what I'm thinking of with the pilot light is that it has to be extinguished. How am I doing with the slurping? It has to be totally extinguished in order to get a grip on things. And, you know, I've been, of course, watching my food and paying attention to how it makes me feel. And I have um, olive oils, I have nut butters, I have nuts, and um, what else do I have that's like that? Oh, um, Kerrygold butter. And um, even my tablespoon of Brain Octane in my um, bulletproof coffee in the morning, along with Kerrygold butter. And so, those are um, the items that keep me satiated, that tell my brain I've had something that's nourishing and going to hold me and sustain me. And um, today, for example, I'm having my um, big salad for lunch with two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. I'm having the uh, Trader Joe's one, the Sicilian olive oil that I like. And I'm having six organic cherry tomatoes as my fruit a tablespoon of um, slivered almonds and a whole slice of the Vermont brand uncured um, no nitrates, no nitrites um, apple bacon and a whole slice of that chopped up in the salad. And you know what? I'm in heaven. And um, I've been turning my taste buds on to having really the dark, leafiest kinds, the baby spinach, baby arugula, um, and the baby uh, romaine lettuces. And I think I'm fully adapted to the very dark, leafy green taste now. And it's funny, when the pilot light of grains and sugars is extinguished, at least it was for me, 
The interesting thing is that the sugar craving, the trigger, kind of goes away. And um, today, for me, when I have my fat bomb at night, it's more like um, it's more like a concentrated um, fats, not sugars. And um, it's just fascinating that to me, this is more this is like a dessert. It is a dessert. And um, and so it's very, very satisfying. And that's what seems to be working for me. But as long as you keep that pilot light going on the grains and the sugars, you will always have the battle. And just like the video that I recently did, Cracking the Code, if the combo doesn't work getting into the safe, don't blame the safe. So if if the combo for what you need for your body is no sugar and no grains, because maybe you're older, maybe you're stalled in your weight loss, maybe you're so tired of hearing about this, maybe you should try it. You can't just have a little. You can't, you can't have one drink a day, attend Alcoholics Anonymous, and say that you're clean and sober. You can't just do one shot of heroin at night to sleep better and say that you're clean and sober, that it's now medicinal because <laughs> it helps you sleep. You can't do that. And of course we laugh at something like that, but think about it. Think about how you might have some self-righteousness about your right to eat the bread or your right to have the sugar and it really messes with the tummy, messes with your digestion, messes with your metabolism, messes with your weight loss, and most of all, messes with your head because that pilot light gets put on low. And so it's saying, I want more now. And that's what it's going to say. And nothing's going to satisfy it. When people are trying to get off of opiates or heroin, and for example, there are ways to withdraw from it. And the cold turkey one is the bear, of course. It's horrible. And if you've ever heard about it from somebody or read about it or even seen somebody like I did when I worked at the jail, um, it's not pretty. It's horrible. But it's over with after, I don't know, a few days or a week. If you do the slow way, which is to be on a medically assisted treatment plan and slowly wean yourself, it may or may not work. Um, but there's been lots of successes. Um, and so uh, for me, it was the same with the grains and the sugar. I could not have a little bit of them in safety because my brain turned on. Last night, I had to prepare for a ribbon cutting with um, the fruit plate fruit plates, fruit bowls, and the cookie plates. And um, so I had to, um, you know, put these four types of cookies on the plates, and there were three platters of them for all the people. And they were at my desk at, in a row, like that, and so all I'm doing is smelling cookie. And it did not make me want to, like, put one in my pocketbook, take it home, and pretend to myself and the world that I wasn't going to have one. Were they beautiful and tempting? Sure, because when I buy the cookies, I buy what I'd want to eat. But I didn't have any because I don't want to start that pilot light up again. And it's that important to me. And so I know that having, having healthy fats and having something to look forward to when I came home from work last night, which was my salad with two tablespoons of Evu, and one tablespoon of of slivered almonds. You get this. You get the point, right? I do a lot of the same, but it's totally satisfying to me. So by having that to look forward to, I didn't feel I didn't feel deprived that other people were getting to eat the cookies. The fruit even was tempting, but I'm not going to be eating it because I've already had. Yesterday was a double fruit day, I guess. I had a quarter of a cup of chopped up pears and six organic grape tomatoes in my salad. Woohoo! Huh? Party down. And, um, you know, for me, that's the treat. And it's interesting how your taste buds and your head will adapt. And, and if you knew me before, if you knew me before, but you, most of you wouldn't have seen me with my head in the chocolate chip cookie dough bowl, forget the cookies, just right into the bowl, 
I mean, talk about slurping not being acceptable in public. I mean, the way that I ate my sugar and my grains was totally animalistic. I was an animal with that stuff, licking my fingers. And, oh, my God, it was just, it, if you saw me, you'd go, and you're a mother? <laughs> you're a grown-up? Wow. So, anyway, be careful of that pilot light because it could be lit with one cookie, one cracker, one slice of pizza, one scoop of ice cream. There are healthy alternatives out there, or not necessarily healthy, but grain-free and um, sugar-free uh, ice creams and cakes and cookies and things like that if you still want to satisfy the sweet tooth. But if you do become fat-adapted, just saying, low-carb, high-fat food plan, that the triggers will go away. The cravings do diminish. And I was the biggest sugar carb freak there was. And, you know, it took me a long time to get to where I am, but it did happen. And I'm not interested in lighting that pilot light again. I don't need that eternal flame, always waiting for that one thing to get into my stomach and say, more, more, mm -mm, not today. And I hope not today for you guys too. So thank you for watching. I always appreciate your comments. Enjoy your day. Don't light your pilot light. Don't. <laughs> See you the next time. Bye-bye for now.